Are we live? I think we're live. We are I, live. It says it up in the corner. It does say it up in the corner. I, I, I'm pretty sure we're like, are we live y'all? Yeah, Ellen's on mute, but I, I'm pretty sure we're, we're, we're live. Oh, yeah. please. Can you check? Uh. I will check YouTube. How about that? <laughs> There's no I'm need. I'm, jo I'm joking. I know. <laughs> Is there going to be something else, right? Comes up. See? I know you guys are hilarious and the, the audience is probably like you guys what are you doing yeah we're, I'm messing with you because normally this show is pre-recorded normally we are not joining you live but it just so happens that so much was going down in the LBC that we had to come to you live absolutely 110 percent live so welcome to episode 117 of black pro gen live and whichever of you panelists are watching the episode live on youtube and did not mute your computer if you could do that for me now thank you what's going on y'all it's your favorite crew in genealogy of course as i mentioned history and scripted live today is july 28 2020 we are coming to you with a lot of news a lot of things to talk about and you know my name for the evening is Fatima Palmer. I was born about 1775 and I'm joined by Zeke Weems. He was born about 1790 and, and I'm joined by Robert Swales. Pretty sure he was born before 1870. And, and I'm, I'm also joined by Tomasa, Tomasa Mendez, who was born circa 1745. And I think based on my math that she was born before 1870 as well. Just can, do we need do we need a calculator for this? Y'all y'all want a calculator for us to do the math on this? Regardless, we love you all. We miss you. We we are still quarantined, keeping ourselves safe with masks, etc., hand washing, hand sanitizer, Clorox wipes when you can find them. We want to thank you all for joining us. Evelyn Jenkins from Gulfport, Mississippi. Queen Ottawa from Fort Smith, Arkansas. Uh, Kim Morton is checking in from DC. We've got Michelle Mahler checking in from Ann Arbor, Michigan. Patriva Mack in Tampa, Florida. Hello from Louisiana, or it could be LA. LA or LA, depends on who you talk to. Ryan, uh, Ray Leslie, if I'll say Ryan Leslie, getting my people confused. <laughs> Ray Leslie says he's from Maryland. Mill Perkins checking in from Nashville. Hey, Cashville, what's up? Hello from Connecticut, from Christine Varner. Denise Muhammad checking in from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Marquita Fletcher, Nashville, Tennessee. Henrietta Kane, Georgia. We got a lot of stuff. People coming in from New York. Hello, Teresa. Hello, everybody else. We love you. It's just been a time in about 35 lands. Yeah, it's been about time in 35 lands. The first thing we're going to talk about this evening. Well, before we get into it, Somebody asked, uh, what does LBC mean? So we, we might need to have a, a moment of an educational uh, oh, uh, moment. LBC, Long Beach Compton, LBC, Long Beach City. Um, it's a reference if you're from Southern California. Um, there's a song that goes, ooh, ah, summertime in the LBC. There's a full song that does this. It's often referenced in songs um, from a particular clique that existed during the early 90s to 2000s, referred to as Death Row, who had artists on its roster such as Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg. Yes, that's commonly where you hear about the LBC, just in case you guys did not know, but that's okay. I know, I know. And you know what, little known fact, a bunch of people from Long Beach are from Macomb, Mississippi. In fact, did you know that Brandy and Ray J's family, along with Snoop's family, along with Nate Dogg's family, are all from Macomb, Mississippi? Did you know that? Hmm. Side note, Brandy and Ray J and Snoop, first cousins. Absolutely. And you also have to include, um, is, it, is it Daz? Yes. Daz is right. in that family too. Now, since we're talking famous families, you, if we're talking Macomb, Mississippi, we have to talk about North Carolina, Casey and Jojo, Fantasia, uh, along with Anthony, or not Anthony Hamilton, Dave Hollister, I believe is in mm. that family too, right? So she, she's like, look at Shelly, she's like, who's Dave Hollister? Black Street, <laughs> before I let you go, before I let you go, can I you, get a You kiss know, I'm up with baby. that stuff, remember? 
<laughs> me and Andre hitting. Yeah, here we go. I know, I know. You guys are a mess. It's okay. Cause because we cause we already know what's coming in this conversation and we're trying to avoid it because we want to be on our best behavior. But guess what? We might not be. All right. So first topic of discussion for this evening. Of course, I've got to come with receipts because what else do I know how to do? But come with receipts. Last week, and this is the official message coming out of Jed Magic, a company that a lot of us used to use, but we no longer use, but some of us are still on. Whatever, it's up to you. The following message is going out to customers via email. Interestingly, I'm still a registered person on this site. I did not receive this email. Did anyone else get this via email? I you did. Got, you got it via email. Anyone else with an account get it via email? Not I, said the Zeke Wings. Not Nika, Ellen. It came late. I got it. It came late, though. It came late. Okay, Ellen? I don't think so. Okay, well, I'll read it to you. Do we want NPR voice or do we want Nika? NPR. All right, NPR. NPR. The following message is going out to customers via email. On the morning of July 19th, JedMatch experienced a security breach orchestrated through a sophisticated attack on one of our servers being via an, an existing user account. We became aware of the situation a short time later and immediately took the site down. As a result of this breach, all user permissions were reset, making all profiles visible to all users. This was the case for approximately three hours. During this time, users who did not opt in for law enforcement matching were available for law enforcement matching and conversely, all law enforcement profiles were made visible to GEDmatch users. On Monday, July 20th, as we continue to investigate the incident and work on a permanent solution to safeguard against threats of this nature, we discovered that the site was still vulnerable and made the decision to take the site down until such time that we can be absolutely sure that user data is protected against potential attacks. It was later confirmed that GEDmatch was the target of a second breach in which all user permissions were set to opt out of law enforcement matching. We can assure you that DNA information was not compromised as GEDmatch does not store raw DNA files on the site. When you upload your data, the information is encoded and the raw file deleted. This is one of the ways we protect our users most sensitive information. Further, we are working with a leading cybersecurity firm to conduct a comprehensive forensic review and help us implement the best possible security measures. We expect the site will be up within the next day or two. Remember, this was six days ago that they posted this. We've reported the unauthorized access to the appropriate authorities and continue to work toward identifying the individuals responsible for this criminal act. Tuesday, we were informed that my heritage customers who are also GEDmatch users were the target of a phishing scam. Remember to exercise caution when opening emails and clicking links. Never provide sensitive information via email. If an email seems suspicious, contact the company in question directly through the phone number or email address listed on their website, not via reply to a suspicious email. Yada, 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 yada. What say you? Because there are questions in the chat room about what is GEDmatch. GEDmatch is a third party website that used to be our haven of genealogical research when it comes to genetics. And it got co opted by law enforcement. And the folks that previously owned GEDmatch decided, hey, we don't care. We're going to, you know, perhaps sell our trap house in South Florida um, because we've gotten so much money selling said company. And they sold the company to another company called Verigen, which you know, they work directly with the FBI. It used to be a way in which people could download their raw data from um, genealogy websites and um, they could uh, upload it. So if you tested wherever you wanted to test, they could upload it and you can see people from different companies in one place. But as I mentioned, it got co-opted by law enforcement. And it was a central part of the Golden State Killer case. And then of course, there's a bunch of issues regarding permissions and um, just uh, approvals, just, just violations of trust amongst the users. They opted everyone into law enforcement and then left it, opted everyone out of law enforcement access. What do you guys think about this latest breach? What, what are your thoughts? Well, you I know, think it's all wide open. It, it is. Mm -hmm. And you know, you know, you know, Fatima, you said something very important. You said used to be. And uh, I know a minister many years ago who used to always say used to be don't make no honey. Mm -hmm. So 
you know, at the end of the day, there was a time when we remember when, but unfortunately certain people made decisions and those decisions have consequences. Some of which you may foresee and some of which you may not have foreseen. But at the end of the day, people were told ahead of time that something like this could happen and it happened. Auntie Shelley. Yeah, I, I think this is becoming such a common thing now for these breaches. It's almost suspect in one sense because it also impacted my heritage, if I'm correct. We had the Jed match, then something happened at my heritage. It was a female but- fishing scam. Oh, okay. That's what that one is. Mm -hmm. And, and the thing of it is I got the email and I'm wondering, cause you know what? I do the $10 a month thing with Jed match. That might be why some got and some don't got. That's some horrible language, but anyway, y'all know what I mean. Uh, but no, but it doesn't, it's users. It's users. It shouldn't yeah, matter if somebody, one, yeah, it shouldn't be if two. someone's paying for the additional tools versus someone not paying. Like this is it still affected everyone that potentially has data on the site. So that, you know, that's like saying, hey, you know, yeah. uh, you left your car here last week, but because there was no repair needed, we don't need to tell you that somebody ransacked through all the cars, stealing stuff out of them. Right. Well, and again, it grew very fast. It was very, <clears throat> excuse me, very easy to use, which made more people. And then when it opened up that you could do all the different companies, DNA companies, and put them all in one place, I think people got excited. But um, I just think everything is breached. Th- this is just me, my, my craziness. But any of these sites, even if they say they were private, because I guarantee you people don't know when they set up them private trees on Ancestry, the first 30 days they public. I had no idea. The first 30 days they are public. Then they go private. So the stuff is out there. If, you know, it's out there. First 30 days. The first 30 days a private tree is public. I've read the writing. I've read the, the stuff. The first 30 days, it is public. When you do a private tree on Ancestry, because you know I got almost 100 trees on there. With my I stock. question that only because there's a couple of caveats. If you, When you do a private tree, you can make it private searchable or you could make it private unsearchable. Correct. So which one are you referring to? I'm searching, but nobody can see my stuff, but I still get all the hints. Okay, but I think you're getting confused with searchable, meaning if you have a private tree and you mark it so that it crawls your tree, that make and other people can find out that you have certain folks on your tree, but it's marked private, right? That is private searchable. Private non-searchable means that it's not getting indexed at all so that other people will not find that you are researching these people. Those are two I don't know things. what other people see. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll I don't we, know what they. We can see. talk. We can talk about that offline. But that, yeah. that delineation and are we does need to be made. Supposed to be recording. We are recording. Oh, okay. I didn't see it up there, so that's what we I are. was just wondering. That's we good. Are. I see new names. Yeah. But anyway, that's my <laughs> thoughts on Jed Match, and I I had a problem with the whole law enforcement thing, um, in one sense, you know, uh, that was almost like a target. And I understand if people had criminals and this, that, and the family, we all got somebody back there or there now or whatever, but um, I should have had that choice, which they gave us that sort of choice after the fact. I didn't like the fact that Jed Match was letting people basically come in and tap into all the files, you know, and look at it. So Um, But I still have my account with them. I haven't been on there in a while, but I am a tier one on on Jed Match. Ellen, Andre, would you like to weigh in on this? I'm sorry, Robert and Tomasa. (laughs) Um, Just one hot mess. And it's unfortunate (laughs) that, you know, a, a really wonderful tool is now no longer really available to those of us who are trying to take this research seriously because we are the trustees of other people's DNA. So it's not even it's just it's our own. More than likely, we are responsible for 
many other people. And so just being mindful of that, it's unfortunate that a tool that where you can just aggregate all this data from other places is continuously being compromised, not just from just a data perspective, but also from an entertainment perspective as well. And so it just, it's just sad. It really is just sad because now we got to, when we talk to some of our other topics, you know, we got to figure out, okay, well, where do we go to next? You know, what tools do we have available to us? Ellen, anything I, you'd like to say? I agree. I just think it's a, it is a hot mess. And uh, it just seems like there's, you know, if they want to get the information, get the information, but like how convenient three hour window, I can scrape all the info, but like, you know, I'm going to have to go back on there and, 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 and be using it also, but I'm also looking at within an eye of like what's next and what, what alternatives are there, which I would think that something is going to come up pretty soon because I, I don't think people really want to be dealing with this much longer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I this, think, uh, go ahead, go ahead, James. I'm sorry, I'm sorry yeah. Zeke. I'm sorry. Uh, it's, it's, all, it's all right, Fatima, it's all right. Um, I think that uh, th this is one of the issues, though, when you have people um, making decisions for themselves or for their, you know, interest group or what have you, and not taking into account how their actions affect other people who may or may not agree. You know, I, I honestly think that this whole situation um, with law enforcement and Jed Match could have been better handled. And maybe if it had been better handled, maybe you wouldn't have people in our live chat right now talking about the deleting their kits as we speak. Maybe we wouldn't have those situations right now, but because people did things in a, in a, I'll just say in an unprofessional manner and you try to be sneaky about it, et cetera. Yes. And, 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 and people are chasing that almighty dollar trying to think yeah. they're getting over on people. You end up shooting yourself in the foot in the long run. You know, I but think it was, you, you mm -hmm. go ahead, James. No, no, no. I, 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 I'm, I'm just saying, I think you, you shoot yourself in the, in the foot in the long run by not being upfront with people, you know, from the get go. And now, you know, I don't, I don't know that, 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 that GEDmatch or any other similar system will ever be able to um, get back to what once was um, a really great tool uh, to utilize. But the reality is GEDmatch was a homegrown site. And mm -hmm. that's, so it's one part of it is the fact that, you know, they weren't taken to other people's thoughts into consideration, but it was a homegrown site. And the owner was really clear, or creator was really clear about that person had no resources to counter any time they were getting subpoenaed or, you know, and trying to force access into their database. They just didn't have the resources. That shouldn't excuse it, but it speaks to a larger issue about our privacy and what do we have to secure ourselves. And so thus, Jet Match gets sold to Verigen, but the reality was it was a, you know, mom and pop shop that is still essentially a mom and pop shop with a corporate label on it. So, so are you arguing then that, um, that perhaps the situation wouldn't have occurred if there had been more um, financial support from the genealogy community of GEDmatch? Is that, is that what you're... Uh, Not so much some financial support from the genealogy community. If it had just been built on a more secured platform straight out the gate... What you said. And then you wouldn't have had as many of the issues that GEDmatch had. But if you're going to build something on an access database and you're going to publish it online, then this is what you get. Versus you working through AWS or some other appropriately cloud database servers or whatever case you want to call it, you know, it made themselves openly vulnerable. That's all. And can, and can I welcome, I, I, I need to welcome, um, there, William Ivy has joined the conversation. Um, William, hi, hi, William. I just wanted to make sure that people realize that you were born before 1870. W William Ivy is a very pretty man. Yes. I feel, com I feel comfortable saying that. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I had connectivity issues and I tried. It's okay, myself, William. It was I'm a long here. way to travel from 1812. Yeah. We made it all the way from <laughs> South Carolina to Alabama to here. So <laughs> <laughs> well, you were well, here. Well, we and it. John was, was catching William Ivy on the way too, coming from Angola. 
So hey. yeah, we, we made a stop probably we over made a stop. in South Carolina. Yeah, well, I, I have to interject because the, the chat room is going is going pretty wild over here. Um, you know, folks saying they they think agreeing with Andre that they think that they had weak cybersecurity controls. Um, another first person saying exactly, Virgin didn't ensure any greater security than the mom and pop guy. And when, I think that's correct because I think in some ways Virgin probably was like, oh, well, this is a cash cow, right? Like we can make some money quick off the top, and then you know the existing system already works as long as the customers are fine. You know, being the law enforcement customers, let's not get it twisted, right? This is kind of like the tiered approach that we have with, with genealogy, okay? Where it is a matter of, yes, it's for our admixture results, but it's also from the perspective of health, right? How are we getting, you know, especially in case of 23andMe or any, any other system that yeah. is moving into health, right? How do we conduct trials for drugs and other things, right? The initial way to get the DNA is is through autosomal DNA testing and percentages. But beyond that, the staying power, because it's not profitable, is to move into health, okay? With GEDmatch, yeah. the model is flipped. For them, their main customer is law enforcement. Let's just call it what it is. Though law enforcement contracts bring in more money for GEDmatch than your little measly $10 uh, right. tier one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's just let's just be and real. And I about also that. didn't think they expected it to grow as fast as it did. Mm -hmm. As the mom and pop, they thought, "Oh, this is good." But the plans never. When when you start in a business, the plan is not the grandeur. That you know what I mean. It's it's a smaller part. And I think once the genealogy per se community got a hold of it, then there was a sore because it seems like there was a few hiccups before the law enforcement stuff came up there was other questions and things that were coming up about jed match and like i said i still have mine sitting there you know i need to cut the ten dollars off but i also opt out of everything and it still says opt out the last time i checked i think nika we were on the phone or something a while ago but it still had all the opt out you know type things so it's, ellen it's, it's I know you were about to make a point. It is. A I mess. think that, you know, there's a there's a larger issue and I don't want to get into that necessarily, but just briefly, I'm thinking about Soshana Zukov's work in surveillance mm -hmm. capitalism, where we are we are the, the raw material for this economy. And all of this that we do and we work with is being scraped like constantly. And if you don't think that that's not happening on Facebook, where most of us do share a tremendous amount of information, that's happening there too. So, I mean, I just have like a humongous question mark about the whole thing. And that's not gonna stop me from doing what I do, but it's still, it's just really strange to think like, who are we servicing here, you know? Mm -hmm. Are they servicing us or are we, service, are we just here to be prey for law enforcement or, or, or some other institutional systems that are making money? We're not making money off it, they are, you know? Well, the Tomasa, small amount of changed. Money. I was about to say, Tomasa, you look, you, 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 you're on the line. You're on the line. That's what they were saying. That's what they were saying to church. Hey, 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 hey. Okay. True, true. Get that, get that whoop track ready. Okay. We God need don't need, need no matches. God don't God need, don't need no matches. God don't need no matches. God don't need no matches. God but, but the thing is, I think the larger point is, right, this is a barrier. And the chat room has been having a whole conversation about this tonight. Regardless of where you stand on this, this has affected your ability to get more family members tested. Because as more of these case, high profile cases come to light, that's our family members seeing us being a commodity. Again, it's seeing intrusiveness, the intrusiveness of law enforcement. I've written about this ad nauseum. You know, people are like, what do you think? I wrote what I thought three years ago. Is yeah. out there. I keep re I keep resharing it because I keep wanting people to understand this is how they're going to contact you if you leave your information on that site. We've discussed it at length with Shelly and me and how her, she had a phantom niece that didn't exist and how my mother's information was on the site even after I deleted it. Yet and still, they don't guarantee the information that's on GEDmatch and law enforcement are then using it. And so, of course, naturally, my mind that is not a lawyer, I don't have a JD, but I have good common sense is wondering how you can prosecute any case after this breach. Time, time, time out, time out, time out, time out. I need, I need to take a quick pause for a minute. A lot of y'all don't understand that when Fatima says something before it happens, I pray 
I want y'all to know, I pray that y'all don't prove Fatima right. And in this particular instance, when she was proved right, I called her on her phone. And I want y'all to know I could hear the smile when she picked up. I want y'all to understand that. What she said just now was absolutely correct. And anybody who's been watching this show or the related shows knows that she said this years ago. And many other people said it years ago. And um, y- y'all y'all messed up by, by proving the right. I just want y'all to know that. Well, and if you know anything about Islam, you know that Fatima is the daughter of Muhammad. Right. All praise due to Allah. Now, but, I'm Christian, but, but I know think, that. <laughs> but let me ask a question. Yes, Since ma'am. you got living DNA, you got 23 in me, you got my heritage, you got uh, ancestry. Should we not be thinking about the same thing about them? Well, I the only reason why I would caution you is because at least there's finances behind those sites. Okay. They weren't being run out of a trap house in, in Florida. Well, but and yes, I did call it a trap house. True. Do I have to bring the picture up? Do you want me to do the picture? Girl, you know how that picture just stirs something up in my soul ever since. Oh, they had to make me go out on Twitter on that photo. <laughs> you know I mean, True had a moment, but but I, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. If Jed Match had come out before law enforcement access and said we don't want our site to be used this way then I would maybe feel some type of way, but they did not. 23 and me? Oh, hell no, no, we ain't letting you have access. Ancestry? Oh, hell no, we ain't letting you have access, yeah. right? I, as long as you keep yo in the wheelhouse. Oh, isn't there a parallel to right now? Yes. As long as you stay yo in the house. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Come on now, are mm-hmm. you exposed? Is your butt out? No, it's not. Unless you're Prince. Um, but still. <laughs> they say you got the Prince theme going on up there. I Texas. do. I, you know, I love Prince. I love they Prince. Do. Got this at Target. It's $8 shirt. But regardless, <laughs> um, la- last time I did Biggie, you guys haven't noticed I've been doing musical artists every week, but that's okay. Um, but still, I think, I think it raises an important point um, that regardless right these these websites are only as secure as the people who are behind them and who maintain them and and any company knows and i can you know andre being a it professional will tell you that most companies will spend top dollar to to actually employ the people who are trying to break into these systems because they think with a type of mindset that that a person who is trying to just keep it running is not thinking of, right? If you're, if, if that's like a challenge to you that you like to break into systems, that you are a perfect coder because then you're already thinking ahead, right? Just how we are thinking ahead and, and some of the research that we're doing. So we gotta, we gotta, we gotta move on because we got to get to this Ace Cinema Morgan situation um, with, with DNA. And there are varying opinions on the panel. I just wanna make sure that, uh, that we make sure that we get the, uh, the, the comments. Um, yes, yeah, someone brought up Family Tree DNA. Yes, they do actively allow law enforcement access to their systems. So please know that when you sign up um, for um, that system. Um, someone said, I haven't accepted the new term, so I can't access my account yet on Jebmats yet. I've had another user email me since then. Hmm. How do they have access to mine? But I can't view it. Y'all, I told y'all get out the trap house. Rubber band, man. What do I have to start singing T.I. to y'all? Do, 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 do. Do I have to start singing this to y'all? Do we have to sing rubber band, man? Do we really have to sing it? Do, no. I mean, I'm trying to understand. I'm just trying to get the image out my head from July 2018 when I had to delete. <laughs> but you had a problem. Like, I'm telling you, yeah. I have to show the picture just so they can understand your frustration. Because when I tell you this, this may, oh Lord, I didn't already hit my articles. Dang it. Um, this may true. <laughs> Stop acting like y'all don't hit your number of articles on Washington Post or New York Times, because I know you do unless you pay for a subscription. All right. Well, that maybe is our signal that we need to move on. All right. So we're going to keep going here to talk about what happened on Ancestry. Oh, Lord. Jesus wept. Okay. Take a deep breath. All right. 
Updates coming soon. Now here, I've got to preface this correctly. There was a influencer phone call that took place probably about two weeks ago now where Ancestry revealed certain updates that were coming to the system, the DNA system in particular. One of those things was that in order to improve or to lessen the likelihood of false matches within one's DNA results, they were going to be removing matches that were eight centimorgans and under. Meaning that if you share DNA with another person, let's say me and Andre share DNA and, and our shared DNA is eight centimorgans, that match potentially could be removed from their system. And if I share six centimorgans with True, I wouldn't see her match either going forward, right? So as you log into the site, you will see a box at the top and it will give you drop down information about exactly what's supposed to be happening in early August. Well, the genealogy community in the words of my family, lost their damn mind, okay? Um, it has blown up into, I got so tired of reading about Ace and the Morgans, I did not know what to do with myself. When I have to start using Aretha Franklin memes, y'all know I'm tired, okay? When I have to go to big, beautiful gowns, that's, that's when I, ha I, just, I just don't have it in me. And so there's been a lot of discussion, debate. I see both sides of the issue. Right, because I have eight Cinnamorgan DNA matches that are people that, that I correspond with or that I keep in contact with. But here's the thing, the eight Cinnamorgan DNA matches and below were going to disappear or are going to disappear unless you label them with a color code, unless you have notes already on the profile page or you've already messaged the person. Those are the three ways that you could preserve your matches. Despite this, Everybody lost their damn mind because it was purported that it was going to adversely affect Black people more than it was going to affect other people. Okay, then we had a litany of people writing blog posts about how this was going to adversely affect Black people. Mostly non-Black people writing about how this was going to affect Black people, but we can get back to that later. There's a couple fans that have busted out on this panel tonight. I know, I don't even have mine. I just got a plant next to me, but that's okay. So let's have a conversation because I'm sure that everyone here has gone through the process just because of all of this hubbub that's happened and has looked at their eight Cinnamorgan DNA matches. Are you adversely affected by this or not? And oh, one last thing, one last thing. I will definitely put it on record early on that I do see where the disconnect is with connecting to folks who are from the African continent or direct, direct folks, right? Because a lot of times when we are looking for those people within our, our DNA matches, we're only gonna get eight Cinnamorgans or, or less. So I understand that, get it, got it, good, all right. And scene, let's talk about it. So I have a question first for clarification because the blog that I read, I didn't even get to the DNA stuff. And, and because the, the rant set, the first few lines in the blog set me off. So I have a question for clarifications. When we're dealing with eight Cinnamorgans, is that like six cousins, six to eight cousins? What are we, what are we actually talking to if we had to frame it? If you had to frame the conversation. Yeah. Well, and, and it's interesting because a Maggie alum is in the chat room saying eight centimeter, eight centimorgans and under removal initially felt like it was the burning of a courthouse to me until I took accountability for what I was not doing with the matches. So, so explain that to me, not yeah, so doing the, with the matches. Now here's the thing. When you're talking eight Cinnamorgans, you are speaking about relationships right. that are at the fourth, maybe even sometimes third great grandparent level, right? Fourth, fifth, depending on the level of endogamy or intermarriage within your family, it could actually be further out than that, right? Um, and so with, with people, they're thinking I'm losing my transatlantic slave trade ancestors by people, by them removing these eight Cinnamorgan matches. Okay. So that's kind of that. Now that blog post that claimed it was advocating for the non-removal, we got to cover that entirely separately because that was a full fledged fallout on the floor, act a fool for no reason. That was, I want the gummy bears and you won't buy them at the grocery store for me fallout level of stuff. 
let's deal with the ace of the Morgans first. Um, and, and with the comment about accountability, accountability is you're not going to accountability is have you vetted potentially vetted where that ace of the Morgans comes from, not just on the genetic sphere, but through paper. Have yeah. you tried, have you made an attempt to do that? That's what the accountability looks like. The accountability also looks like targeted DNA testing amongst known family members or identifying people within your DNA results that stand proxy for certain DNA or certain ancestors that you have. Meaning that if me and Andre are first cousins and Shelly shows up as a match between, a shared match between the both of us, that means that they're, she's related on the same side of the family that we share grandparents. Okay. Wow. That's targeted testing mm -hmm. and eight Cinemorgan DNA matches for you where they may disappear. You may show up Shelly as eight for me, but you might show up as 15 or 20 to Andre, even though Got we it. have you in common, right? Right. The, the, the way and the randomness of how DNA works, it really could be the two first cousins. I only have eight Cinemorgans and the other person has 20 or they have 15. But so why can't I have it all? I didn't say you why, couldn't have why it all. Why do I have to have a decision that I'm paying for and ancestry gets hella money from me. I just paid the six months payment, six month payment your of 199. Your DNA results are not connected to your I know, your but I'm still contributing to people working there. You spent a hundred dollars on your huh? DNA kit. You spent a hundred dollars on your DNA kit unless you got it on sale for 59. Oh, I only bought them at do, 59. Well, and, but here's my point. You pay that fee one time unless you choose to subscribe that's a whole other set bucket of money correct different. correct correct different. but my point is as a researcher for myself i want it all don't don't cut me off at the knees i don't care if it's a seventh great grandfather or fifth great whatever cousin i want it all because that's what i paid for so i think i should have all and there should not be any question you know, as to how I'm going to conduct my research, because it tells me I'm only going to get through 10 cinema. And see, I bumped it to 10 and thought, said, wait a minute, I'm going to try to preserve all my 10 and under, because that a lot of the times that's where I'm at with these researchers. And it could be, it's the African, you know, and it's also the European, you know, they're not just cutting off black. I just think I have the right, since I paid for the test, they put the stuff up, they marketed, what, 18 million, whatever, don't take nothing from me, you know. Question, okay, here's, here's, here's the question that I have, though. The, the whole premise of this is that it removes false matches, right, potentially false positives. And how much guaranteed I is that? Well, here, that's the thing. We don't, based on their algorithm, we already know. know it's cons we already know it's conservative, right? Because right. even what I notice is between third, second and third cousins, really third and fourth cousins, the amount of DNA shared is actually more than what's shown on Correct. Ancestry. It's more Correct. conservative, right? Yeah. So if they're, they're trying to improve their algorithm, that's what they're saying. They want to they remove false positives. And this is, this is a means to do so. It might be the one that connects me more to Angola or Nigeria. No, well, I let's get other people involved in the conversation. Because I'm not saying I disagree with you. I'm just facilitating. Yeah. Because right I, I agree. I'm, I don't think it's wrong. What's up? I'm, I'm, going, I'm going to just keep it, keep it the way I know how to keep it, which is neighborhood, not Hollywood. Um, my, in my viewpoint, I didn't really feel like this affected me a whole heck of a lot. But... The fact that it affects the genealogy community as a whole affects me, right. right? And one of the issues I think that we have with some of these services is that there's a question of curation of who makes these decisions and when and why and that third. But one thing I do know about, particularly with Ancestry and Ancestry DNA, um, every so often, if you've been around long enough doing this type of stuff, they change the algorithm and then guess what they do? They end up changing it back in some way, shape, or form. Yeah. And the matches that you had, then they come back. I mean, so so I I I don't want I don't think people should feel the permanence of it per se. And I respect and appreciate the fact that somebody in the chat said that they take responsibility for not color coding and not messaging and not doing this and not doing that. Um, but at the same time, there is an aspect of there's only but so many hours in the day. And so for them to make that decision 
and say, well, we're going to do this and we're going to cut people off at this level or what have you. You know, I, I, I understand it. I, I do. But I also think that you have to understand that like what what my good friend, uh, Mr. John Goings just said also is true, is that genealogists and researchers, historians as a whole, you know, we want as much data. Give us the big data and let us sort through it. Right. That's really the mentality of most people but who are serious about any type of I have a research. caveat to this because, you know, anyone can go and look on their ancestry DNA results and see the number of matches that they have. I have over 33,000. My mother has over 53,000. And I, I can I can I show you something real quick? Y'all want to see something? Go ahead, because you can, you Please. about to head on what I was going to talk about. Go ahead. Yeah, let me let me go ahead. So yeah, she, I she, just she, I just want to show this email that that one of our viewers sent me because they they emailed twenty three and me, and I I just I just want to bring this up because I feel like if we're gonna talk about one company, because we've been talking about all of them tonight, yeah. we got to do it right. So hello, John, or Zeke, or Tomasa. Thank you for contacting 23andMe team. I understand that you noticed some changes to your DNA relatives list. That's the, that's the equivalent to DNA matches on Ancestry. To, be, um, to clarify, our segment matching threshold has been updated. Notice this information was not communicated to us ahead of time. She had to write them for them to respond with this. Although those of us who work in this already knew this information to be true. Okay, let me just put that out there. To be shown in your DNA relatives list, a relative must now either share one segment of at least nine cinnamorgans or share two or more segments of at least five cinnamorgans. This is the this is the, the minimum for 23andMe. Remember, they have not communicated this to you. You have to write them for them to tell you this, okay? So again, to be shown in your DNA relatives list, a relative must now either share one segment of at least nine cinnamorgans or share two or more segments each at five cinnamorgans. At these length thresholds, we can be confident that an identical DNA came, that the identical DNA came from a common ancestor. The reason why, we're, and I'll cover why we can't say DNA doesn't lie when we're talking under eight cinnamorgans or really 10, okay? We'll cover that after I read through this. We also increase the DNA relative match cap to 2000, from 2000 to 2100. You just heard me reference the fact that I have 33,000 DNA matches on Ancestry DNA. 23andMe caps your total number of matches to 2,100. You don't get to 33,000 on 23andMe. Please note that your total number of matches may be less than 2,100 if some of them have chosen to opt out of the feature or the 23andMe service. So if someone that you know or someone that you matches opted out of getting the DNA matching, just got the percentages, they count against your cap of 2,100 people. Oh. Mo yes, moving forward. Alternatively, you may see more than 2,100 matches since your sharing connections do not count to the 2,100 match limit. This means that if someone's private, you do a connection, right? That does not count. But how many people are doing that? Your total number of matches is expected to change over time. So knowing this and knowing that you were not contacted about this and the fact that this was changed, does that change your mind? No, because yeah. the reality is how many people are actually doing the research to get back to the fourth, fifth or sixth great grandparent. So I'm, I'm leaning more towards Zeke's standpoint where it's like, Yes, I would love to have it all, but I got 22,000 matches of which under a thousand are estimated to be fourth cousin or, uh, or greater. So essentially I got about 21,000 DNA cousins that are ranging between six Cinemorgans to 20 Cinemorgans that I, I'm gonna have to call through and of that, how many of those individuals have done their due diligence to create a tree to for me to even start to figure out where they're coming from? So it, it's a weird catch-22 that we are in when it comes to this conversation, because like I said, I see both ends of that spectrum. I'm still not there, or I'm not understanding it. I would never get to John. I'll never connect to any of John's descendants. John is the ninth great grandfather. I will never get to 
any of his descendants where I got a paper trail leading to him, but I won't, unless DNA comes up and it's going to be in those low numbers, probably under 10 to connect just because of how far he's back. And, and no, I, I, I so think I'm losing something. So here's my question. And I think this is a part that we don't discuss a lot. How many people are actually being trained on how to understand their DNA and how to do the triangulations and all the other analysis that is required to even make those types of genealogical um, breakthroughs, you know? And so there are a lot of people who have zero clue which is why I'm going to put a plug in. This is why you have Maggie to uh, start what understanding. What you said, what you, you said. You know, you to... Said. So, look, true, true got a church thing up. <laughs> she got a church thing up. You know, <laughs> to help you understand. Now, I get you, I get you, Shelly. I really do. I it's do not that I, It's not like I don't. The problem that I'm also having from the people who are also talking about it is that there are some folks who aren't knowledgeable in how to analyze DNA. So I'm like, well, do you even understand what you're missing? I do just because you understand. I have you guys and I've been around the people that do it. I am definitely not a DNA expert by no means. Let's and I some, refer those but you, people But you out. have more, but you have a greater understanding and you have yeah. an understanding of how yeah. to analyze the cinnamorgans, yeah. the chromosomes and understand what that means. Yeah, I do. Half the pe- like more than half the people who are taking ancestry DNA are just taking it so they can figure out where they come from. Well, and I was just about to make that, yeah, just to get the ethnicity. And I, and I, something else that when I brought this up to someone who tested, they're like, I don't even scroll past the first page. Yep. Well, we have a mutual friend that that doesn't go past the third cousin level. Exactly. And, and, and something else that I need to bring into this conversation, James, I hear you. I want to get true Mm -hmm. and Ellen involved in this as well is when you teach DNA, we specifically tell people to look at DNA matches above a certain threshold because that is more easily provable and there's less of a likelihood that it's not identical um, by state, but identical by descent. And in the genealogy community, what we have done is we have kind of force fed this DNA doesn't lie narrative without holding up or without presenting the caveat that after you have, you know, where you have matches that are under a certain threshold, it's, there's a possibility that it might be IBD, not IBS, or, you know, might be IBS, not IBD, right? And if you don't know the difference between identical by descent and identical by state, then you really should not be having a conversation about losing matches under a Morgans. And I mean, let me be haughty and say that because that's, that's, that's that should be a part of the conversation. James, True, Ellen, um, let me let True get in here because my because my baby been on mute the whole show. I feel like. Well, I'm 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 in agreement with Shelly. I see what she's saying, and I, because I know where she's at in DNA. But what was it? I had twenty seven thousand matches, nine hundred nineteen close, um, that are in that category of the fifth to eighth. And what before COVID? Um, we had this thing where I wasn't like really getting anything good or doing anything, but I started noticing those cluster matches and you touched on about the IBD and the IBS. And we've always been taught that since, at least for me, because I came in the game in 2012, I've been taught to don't worry about that. But all of a sudden, like right, was it January or February? I started getting these little clusters or I would find one of those six and one, the six CM one segment, I call them six dash one people. And they would be matching somebody that's on a fourth cousin that I knew where our relationship came in. So I was kind of working with that for a minute and I kept saying, but we're always at the intel. We're always at the intel of getting everything. And it always feels like it's hurting our community when things like this happen. And where is the tool? You know, I like Ancestry and I like 23andMe. I'm mad at Family Tree DNA and like I'm off the jet match. But where is the tool for me to try Angulate and to say where is that segment is coming from? Is that on my European side or is that a black ancestor? Is that my daddy's people or my mama's folks? You know, and I have these five generations, but that's what it's starting to feel like every time these situations come up when there's a breach of security or that 
I'm not going to say that person's name, that blogger wrote that blog. Like all this just compounds on to, we always got to go through this chain, these changes and it feels like it's affecting us. And I put too much emphasis on the emotional attachment to it. Yes, we know this is science, but those fifth to eighth, you know, just recently started to mean something to me. Those were my ancestors that I, you know, I keep on imagining about. That's how I, I look at that. And sometimes with, when, when these situations come up, it's hard for us to separate the science from the folks. But that's the difference in when you're doing African-American research, you know. I just wanted to bring that point up too, that how are we dealing with that emotionally when it's science, but yet where are the tools for us to get through figuring out what does that mean? Because I feel like I'm going to be losing something personally a little bit because I had started making some ground with it. But that's what I wanted to say. I need some tools and answers. Can you give me a browser for a minute? <laughs> I have to keep on going over to 23 and me when my people was testing over at Ancestry. And I know that that would help, but I can't trust JetMatch because they're just using me over there. They're taking people's money and they done turned that into a law enforcement agency. And that's not what we got into it for. And that still goes back to what I said about how we sometimes cannot separate the science from the emotion of this because okay. we're already feeling like we're behind in the game. We're trying, we're running, we're trying to catch up. They've been doing this for me. Nah, we we ain't behind. We ahead. Damn. True. It was. I'm sorry. Let me I just was behind, say that. But I'm no, we there. ain't no, you ain't behind and neither is Shelly. And I'm gonna tell you why, because we ain't going over here masquerading like we know how to dip into Eastern European research and we don't know what the hell we, we do doing. it all. We, we do, do it we all. We do do it all. But I just feel like when we got into DNA, I didn't get into it to 2012. And I had to really but you hit the still know, running. but you still right. know, you still know what you know. Yes. Yeah, don't I do. discount yourself. And Shelly, y'all over here acting like y'all don't know nothing. Don't make me I know oh, stop enough it. that I feel like true. I'm gonna lose something. If they take it away, I'm but gonna that's lose the something. emotional side of me, it not is. the science okay side of me that we study. I'm right. okay with the emotional side because my Tomasa. research is emotional. Tomasa. You know, no matter who I'm looking for and whose ancestor it is, there's always some emotion attached to it. Tomasa. Well, I always think about the histogram that I got from my heritage, which was a lovely pink, you know? <laughs> so <laughs> what do I do with that? But anyway, I'm, I'm just getting into this. I'm much more documents person. And then I feel like if I can get a solid lead on something and then I can inch my way back, back, back into time. But I'm not going to say that I know exactly what all these relationships are. And even, even there, I, I have to contend with, um, you know, what, what's the effect of endogamy on all of this as well, you know? So, it's evolving. I don't know. DNA is evolving. And I think that's where we're, we're caught up in the middle of that right Agreed. now. Because yeah. we don't really know yeah. where it's going to take us. And that's why we're getting this angst feeling. And, you know, hopefully it'll come back around where, you know, that those matches will be fine tuned for us eventually right. because you know maybe that'll help us feel and go into ease but just go ahead and color code i got two cats i got the six cms for the europeans and my african exactly. americans that i think mm -hmm. are black so right. you know we right. just yeah. keep james, doing what we're doing james what were you gonna say uh, i just got two quick things to say one is i think well actually three one is i agree ancestry it would be Great if they had a chromosome browser, but but look, I ain't saying nothing yeah, that y'all don't know, and they've been saying for years anyway. Um, so that's one. Two is I I think that there does need to be a bigger conversation around how DNA and genetic genealogy is being marketed. Um, and I've expressed this to people who you know who have some positions at some of these companies. Um, myself you know, myself in person. Um, you know I think doing ethnicity estimates is good but i have yet to see a matter of fact i will help i will i will help for for a nominal fee of course uh help you guys put together a commercial or something to to not just talk about how somebody found out that they were really german and not scottish or whatever but talk about the actual connections that people make through using these different services as well i think that that needs to be those those commercials have well. been made 
Oh, where? Because I, I, I'm gonna tell you right now, the ones I see all the time. I just, are the I, ones I, that I, that I wouldn't have been to Benin had one not been shot. Okay, fair. Okay, okay, okay. Fair point. Fair point. Fair point. But I think that that needs I, to be I can't more. speak for 23 of me, but I'm just, I'm just, I'll just put I, that one out. I, I, no, 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 no. I, oh, wait, I, hold I on. No, there was what, another what, one. There what? was another one that someone else that was on the panel was part of as well, where people mm-hmm. reunited as a result of DNA through Ancestry DNA. That would be Teresa Vega. Right. So, right. Keep, but keep that, going. Right. But that ran for like, but that ran for like, uh, at least in my area. I don't know about anywhere else. In the, in the area where I live, that ran for like a week. I'm not gonna lie. Like I'm being, I'm telling you my experience, right? But point well taken. The the other commercials that I'm talking about, those get constantly pushed, and I think they get pushed because they. I think that these companies feel as though that I'm not just trying to pick on ancestry. I think they feel like that's what their bread and butter is, and I think that those that these other things, just like what you were talking, what the one you were involved in, the one Teresa was involved with. I think that that needs to be pushed a little bit more, also to kind of get a better to better educate the consumer. That's point two. My last point is this, is that, I, again, I kind of see both sides of this whole argument, but what I just did as y'all were talking was I went on my own Ancestry DNA account and I looked up a direct descendant of the half, of the person who I believe may have been a half brother of Zeke Weems, but who was definitely his slave owner, uh, Moses, his name was Moses Weems. And I found a direct descendant of his that, that shares exactly nine centimorgans of DNA with me. And I think about, how much history there is between myself and this woman who does not share the ween, who doesn't have the Weems name, you know, herself, but has it in her background. I think about how much information, how many questions, how many connections, et cetera, that could be had or could be lost, you know, just from that, from one Cinnamorgan, two Cinnamorgans. I mean, it sounds small, but then in the, but then in, in a very human way, there is an aspect of, you're not just taking something from people, but you're also, you, you, there, there's, there's, the people don't have control over it unless, as you said earlier, are you actually reaching out to these people to, in the, to begin with? Are you keeping your, um, your contacts organized? Are you flagging, color code? Are you doing all these other things to prevent yourself from having to worry about someone else curating your own genealogy? Agree. And as I'm talking about this, somebody just decides to come on uh, with cruising in the drop top. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what? I, I mean, all I have to say just to wrap this up is, and I, I think you're raising a good point, and this really dovetails good into the last conversation we're going to have tonight, is, um, and, and Bernice raises a great point in the, in the chat room, you cannot understand your DNA if you only look at it every six months. That is so true. It is a constant chiseling that has to take place because as new people test, as, as new relations that you know or that you don't know test, you begin to identify and notice patterns in a different way. And so we would be remiss if we did not mention the fact that Maggie has an entire track of classes set up to teach you how to mine through this information. Two different tracks that Maggie exists for this very reason. Um, so you can't sit around with us and say, oh, I'm ignorant, I don't know. Oh no, as much as we push and talk about Maggie, I think everybody on this panel with the exception of, of Ellen, who if she could, she would be there, has gone to Maggie. Um, and the thing is, I just, I just want to raise this point again. It's only as useful as you make it right. You can't get mad at me because you went to Joanne to go and buy some elastic and you deleted the app off your phone. So you couldn't use the 50% off coupon. You can't get mad at Ben Bath and beyond. Cause they stopped sending that 25% off coupon to your house that they used to send. It seemed like every month and you had to go to bed, bath and beyond and you didn't have a coupon. Notice they don't send those anymore. Y'all notice that the blue ones, the long they ones. They ain't open in. per well, se. Yeah. But even, even before that, they stopped. But before them. that, yeah, got them all yeah. the time. Um, so you got to constantly, constantly, constantly keep going back and back to the curating of our history. <sighs> True, you got the you got the iPad with the music. You got it. He no. gone. He done took it off. <laughs> See, Dub done let us down, but I, I, I got my fan in place. I, okay. Okay. I she got her fan. You. Okay. okay. Gone led to blood pressure. Come on up. I, I got my stuff right here. Come on. I know. I know. I just, okay. Just, so I'm ready. And you know, I don't care because I'm going to say the person's name because they, oh, I don't they care either. yeah, they, they doubled down on this. 
um, pretty emphatically. Um, and it is it is entirely the reason why you see everyone on this panel with the name of an, of an ancestor that was born prior to 1870. It's the reason why you see a John Going 1619. It's the reason why you see Fatima 1775 to 1848. It's why you see Robert Swales born circa 1800. It's why you see Tomasa Mendez born circa 1745. Why you see William Ivey born circa 1812 and why you see Zeke Weems born 1790 died approximately 1875. It is because somebody decided that they wanted to go with some base in their chest, all the base, all the trouble and make the following statement. And I quote, African-American DNA isn't any different than other DNA. What is different is that African-Americans have absolutely no records, no surname and no context before emancipation in the 1860s. And that the first census is in 1870. Let me read that again. African-American DNA isn't any different than any other DNA. What is different is that African-Americans have absolutely no records, no surname, and no context before emancipation in the 1860s. Because, you know, emancipation took place over a whole decade, right? 1860s. Just have to make sure you know that. And the first census in 1870, I could have sworn the first census for the United States took place in 1790, not in 1870. But in Virginia, it's in the 1780s. Exactly. But, but, let, me, three but let me, but let me, but let me, let me finish reading. Cause this ain't all this whole stink ass statement ain't, ain't done. They have no idea where to look and without records. DNA is their only way to make connections back in time only way to make connections back in time. And let me also add the caveat of this. The title of this blog post is, and I quote, identifying unknown African-American lineages using DNA. The blogger then chose to connect people who I might add, she mentioned, oh, I looked through my DNA matches and I found a man who was black based on his profile picture. This person really did say that. I found a man that was black and based on his profile picture. And then she proceeded to connect them to her white ancestors. So what African-American lineage did she actually unearth? Then following that, she proceeded to make this statement and then after that, she proceeded to indict one of her ancestors for potentially raping a black woman, named her, named the child that was the offspring, but then chose not to disclose the name of the ancestor who potentially committed said crime. Even now in our news media, we do not name the victims of rape for a reason. So, we would not have been before you for 116 times, for more than 116 hours. We are probably at 200 plus hours for this show because most of the time we're going to two hours. But you can't sit up and watch this, hear anything from me, hear anything from John, hear anything from Robert, hear anything from Tomasa, hear anything from William or from Zeke and make such a claim. And I will tell you that when we pointed it out to said person, they doubled down and told us that we had no right. To, oh, we were racist. We got accused of being racist for calling out a flat out lie. Well, she did, she did. And the thing, that, the thing that's really funny to me about this is that one of the people that came up and was talking about how horrible this was tried to silence me a week earlier and blocked me on Twitter because I said all Black folks don't think alike. So what do y'all have to say about this? Cause I'm laughing because this person said this is apparently this person is apparently well versed. No, they're they're not well versed. Because if you're well versed and you know 
more than a few people that sit on this panel from time to time, you would not make such an unqualified statement. You would not. Not with the Black Pro Gen Live, which is why I'm so irritated about this is because you can't sit up here and act like didn't nobody tell you nothing. Not with all the Googles available in the world. Well, all I know is this. It, Renata Yarbrough Sanders in the chat is saying, talking about Calvin Yarbrough, 1840 to 1929. I know that 843 Gullah News is talking about Isaac and Molly born in 1715. Uh, Priscilla, uh, uh, let's see. We, we we got we got we got all these names coming through. We got we got Peter Branham, 1795 in Kentucky. John, we got James Spurlock, 1760 to 1814. Uh, we got we got Minerva born 1800. I mean, I mean, you know, this this is this is why why are we talking about this? Why why are we even here? Like 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 this this is so absurd. I mean, but unfortunately, we have to address these type of things. I think because we can't allow that type of um misinformation to be disseminated copied and and believed because it's definitely definitely incorrect we've spent too much time on this platform and in others uh correcting the record so you know sometimes we have to address these things well and i'm i'm gonna tell you i i responded and it was nine something in the morning and the problem i have with it don't know this woman but know her as a DNA person, and I know her name, Roberta Estes. A lot of people follow her due to whole nine yards. I couldn't get past that section that Nika just read because I sat there and I thought, what the hell, number one? Wait a minute. Whoa. And, and of course, I went on and wrote a blog about it, you know, because I needed to get that off my chest because Nika is correct. I, I made a response to her that that was not true. She can't say that. And the bad thing about it is people are going to believe her. That's the problem. I said, I got to put my teacher hat on. I can't have people walking away, reading this blog for the ones that respect her and follow her in the DNA community, going away thinking that. And probably the majority of the people that read her blog is white. I don't need them walking away also thinking African-Americans cannot find their people prior to 1870. Well, then you need to give us your papers because you got the papers. You know, they made the laws, you know, they made the records, you know, you got to share that information, number one, and help us even get back further. It, and I ain't even going to talk about 1870 because you can look what we got up here for Robert Swells and stuff, whoever it is. But the thing of it is, I don't know the point she was trying to make it because it screwed it up and it just wiped it totally out if she was trying to so-called help the African-Americans. No, you, you no, saw don't think, she I don't wasn't. Think that no, was she no, she wasn't helping. Let me tell you what. Let me no, tell you what the no, problem no, is. No, I'm saying if that's what she yeah, thought. It, no, she, she didn't. <clears throat> and it was obvious. That's it, the part yeah, that hurt me the totally most, too, because yeah. everything you all said. But that that ancestor that she knew, that's what killed me. Like, what did you do for Mr. James? Because I I don't I can't remember who she named him as as the example because she didn't want to put his real name out there. Didn't put the name, but that's an old thing. Like, I have a lot of white friends. I have a lot of black. I know, friends. but that's, that's how, how I, I received that. it when I saw yeah. that her explaining and she knew he was whoever that person was in her family was the racist and sh the rapist and she was absolving him and some type of centering oh that's yeah cover yeah. type of way that they that happens in history that I've seen pe women do that you know but it, be clear yeah be be clear right. we're finding them every day all day long and it ain't just no damn census that that's what we have to make sure people understand that that are researching their African American ancestor. Don't rely just on those senses. That's well, one of the most is, important messed up documents you're gonna grab. It's a certain day and it's a certain time. That's it. You need to build that arsenal of that tools and information and make it back. Don't even think about the DNA till you get the darn genealogy done. 
Well, you can't do effective DNA research without genealogy. They go they hand do. in hand. They and, do. And, and the and the ish, the, my biggest problem with this bull is the fact that you got on your high horse, like you were speaking, like you were trying to be an ally and you did nothing more than perpetuate a lie. It was big. That you have plenty of examples. And then you double down and accuse us of calling you a racist in the comments. And, and then the thing that's to funny to me is she's gone back and revised this blog. This so if you were so if you were really saying it with your whole chest, why did you go back and and make an addition? Because honey, if you go back and you read it now, it don't say that you can't find records before eighteen seventy. Because clearly somebody pulled her to the side and said, "Oh, you loud and wrong." Yeah. But because it wasn't one I of took us. It also as a slap. Oh, oh, can, can you say that again, Andre? Say that again. Mm -hmm. It wasn't one of us. It wasn't someone of color who told her that she was loud and inappropriate and out of pocket. Uh -huh. And that's the other problem in this whole conversation. Besides the fact that it was a poorly written um, blog, but that's a whole different conversation. Um, yeah. <sighs> the community. It's the community, but the other part of this conversation that I struggled with when I read the blog, like I had a whole highlighter and was highlighting sentences and statements just so I can make sure that I was understanding everything that I was reading correctly. Nika stopped at the, that paragraph. For me, it was the next sentence that was the, was the part. Unfortunately, this is also the threshold in time where the DNA of ancestors prior to 1870 is now chopped into segments the size of six to eight centimorgans. So... You're now saying that at this point, at, at 1870, any of your ancestors are that far back. And we just had a whole conversation where that's not the case for a lot of people. So you're wrong in the first statement, you're wrong in the second statement. And you just assume that all black folks can do is just have DNA to find and do the research. But to Nika's point and to Shelley's point, you got to do the research. And there are a whole lot of folks who ain't even trying to do the research. Just not even trying. That's so, the big problem. The and so it's work. like, you know, so it's like, she's saying like, there's no records. Like, no, their records, they folks are just being lazy. Yeah. Right. Lazy. And I'm not going, and I'm not going to hold your hand and help you do your research when I'm trying to do my own. And the thing lazy. of it is, there is a lot of African-Americans that hire African Americans, but they also hire whites to do research too. You know, you find the expert, find the person in that area, this, that, and other. I and had someone who just I'm not gonna who stand reached up out there to me. And tell you that, huh? I had someone who had a white person reach out to me saying they're doing research on the African American and ask yeah. me how I proved what I had on my tree. And I had in two hours, five paragraphs, like try me, try me again. Mm. Yeah. I'm not stupid and I put that repeatedly. I am not stupid. And don't don't as Nika say double down on me and think I'm something else because we're out here. This is why you see a black pro gen. This is why we have Maggie. You know, and why unfortunately we've been doing what we've been doing all these years. Like you mean exactly. to tell me that all of this I've been doing. Yeah. Yeah. And the thing of it is, and in one essence, we do more than the average right. person can we, can, can because we, we have to do yep. both sides. Come we on, can't do this. We don't there have it a is. That's we it right there. Choice. We come, had to come, learn come, them come, folks come, too. Come, what can I throw at you? I'm trying to find something. I want a shoe. I want a shoe. Jennifer Hudson throws a shoe. I want a shoe. But, the, but the, you know what? I want to put the my house shoes up here. Because I want to make sure I get Ellen right. involved in this as well. But I think the larger conversation comes back to how superior do you think you are over a group of people to insert your narrative and to be told that you are wrong and to double down on it? Because you, I have to constantly bring people back to, and I will continue to share Ellen's post. Matter of fact, when I am dead and gone, I am going to have, can genealogy be racist printed on a piece of paper and I'm going to be like this in my urn. And it's going to stick right up. And it's going to say, can genealogy be racist? Ellen Fernandez Sacco. That's what it's going to have. Because you mm. know why? It is. We weren't supposed to be here. 
This ain't our do you space. Want, do you want me to, do you want me to say that again? We mm. were not supposed to be here. This was not meant for us. This was meant, a matter of fact, it was meant to keep us out because it was mm. supposed to make sure that undesirables were not, weren't procreating and weren't populating the earth. Let's get to the bottom of why this mess is still perpetuated in the system that we are constantly using. It is why we are constantly having to advocate for our place and our space within this industry. It's because we weren't supposed to be here. It's because we don't fit in this nice, cute little box, right? But if we got a DNA study- Just on that. That's what I'm saying. And if a DNA study can be commissioned that tells me that white men entered the gene pool at three times the rate of white women. If we can do that study, if we can add tags to a tree, if we could do whatever, why can't we get all the names of all the slaves indexed on a site? Mm. See, have call mm. me when, when, I, when you want me to email about that, because that is institutional. That getting down to the companies that provide the records Oh, honey, that, that's now. But let's talk about the institution. Let's talk about how the state of Alabama's archives had to admit mm. that they did not yeah. collect records for Black people for a certain amount of time because yeah. it didn't mm. revolve around the Confederacy. Let's talk about Louisiana State University and how they had to literally create a plan so that they prioritize records that dealt with people of color, that they digitize them first and, pr and preserve them and make them available first. If this was not institutional, why do you have organizations and archives and people reevaluating what they do right now if it was not institutional, if we were supposed to be here from the beginning and from jump? Oh, so, they didn't expect us. But come on now. Y'all they too. They didn't expect it. <laughs> and let me tell you, you weren't supposed to learn how to read. Right. You were not supposed well, to learn how to process uh -oh. and distill this information. You were not supposed to out me for my misdeeds and the crap that I did and that my ancestors did to get you here and to keep you here and to keep you under my thumb. Come on now. Yep. So don't stop looking at, at, at your tree thinking that it is just to edify your family. It is to edify all stop of us. Stop over parts in your tree. Exactly. Yeah, mm. it's and it, and the thing of it is, and ignoring it messages be that. that hard, huh? And ignoring messages at that. <laughs> Come on, uh, now. yeah, especially DNA, especially DNA. You can't go by a picture on what somebody looked like. Can, you, can, you know can we I, talk about how problematic that is? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I found his profile picture. He looked black. Okay, do you know the number of trash two hundred and fifty who are white passing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Come on now, where I've been swimming in their records, you out in California putting white on your on your on your situations, and your draft card got you registered as a student at Hampton University. Come clip, on now, clip that little corner, clip the corner, okay? Clip, nah, uh, let's be and, and let me be let me be clear for a second. This is something for, for me personally too. You know that that really hit home for me this week. You know, because to show that we're not, this ain't about, it's not a black white thing. It's, it's, this is a right and wrong thing, right? Correct. Earlier this Correct. week, mm -hmm. yeah. I had a situation on, on a certain genealogy group where somebody posted an image of one of their ancestors who was visibly black of African descent. And somebody commented and said, they said, well, that, that story, you know, that picture looks all well and good, but you look Hispanic. And, and the person says, and I had to check them right then and there. And this was a black person. So this is not a black white thing. This is a right and wrong thing. Plain and simple. Well, and and let me let me take it a step further because one of one of the folks on the panel, Michael Willis, an amazing researcher, mm. awesome, awesome person. Okay, I think everyone has met him. If not, I, you will you will meet him at some point. He is in a group with me where it is the history of two parishes in Louisiana, and we are constantly bombarded with images of antebellum homes where we get the whole history, you know, down to who took the splinter out the slave owner's foot when they hung the, when they hung the door up type stuff, right? But we, it's almost as though the black folks are living in a sense of, well, dang, should I share some of my stuff? And so I love how radicalized Michael got this week. Cause Michael said, you know what? I'm gonna start posting some stuff up. And yeah. Michael, 
literally put up scans of a list of slave births from a plantation in this parish. It is historical. It is true. It could help people. The number of people in that group that accused him of stirring the pot, of causing division, of you are just trying to rile people up. When I've had to sit here on a dang replay, like I'm hitting the 10 second button rewind on Netflix, watching your stuff come past and you guys are not contextualizing it. You are not saying who was shining up that that, that chiffer robe that you still got the collection, uh, that you still have in your collection or who built, laid those bricks or who, who saw that, that wood. You aren't saying that, but the minute I put this image up of these slave births that can help somebody break through a brick wall, oh, now I'm stirring the pot. See, it. my issue is, as long as we don't benefit you, you got a problem. But that's the system. Mm -hmm. That's the system. You, you, you just said the system. And unfortunately, you know, I'm not trying to categorize everybody. But when you come out in black and white on your blog and you state something that's inaccurate and you're not woman enough to take it or at least to compromise or correct it or whatever. You said she's corrected it now. But the thing of it is, if I make an error, I'm the first one to say, oh, my God, I think I screwed up. And, and I'm sure every one of you have heard it, you know, if I miss something, you know, I don't want to walk up to somebody and say, look, I done found your fourth great grandfather and it not be true. And it's just BS. That, that's not why I do this. And again, it's right and what's wrong. We also fight in the genealogy world as in, in at national conferences. And yes. stuff. It, it seems like all this could be even connected from some certain people's thoughts, Come you know, their mind or, you, or their thoughts. Or you only hearing certain people present and perpetuate those yeah. things, right? Yeah. Ellen, I'm sorry, because I, I let me no, let, let me let let me let Dr. Ellen Fernandez Sacco. <laughs> let, <laughs> let me hear Dr. Tomasa Tomasa Mendez. I need to re okay? re read that article again. You need to and, and matter of fact, that's it. true. Um, can you can you find it? It should be easy to find on her blog because literally just just type in could you, can genealogy be racist? Because because yeah. because I, because I'm, gonna I'm gonna let you talk, no, Ellen. I'm gonna let you talk. I'm gonna let you really finish. had to lift, lift. I wanted to lift everybody else up who did this work, who do all, who 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 helped to 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 save people out of being erased or dismissed and. That's the first thing that paragraph did. I was floored when I read it. I was just like, you know, really, you know, I, I, I don't know. And then, and then to think like my blog post that that's from two years ago. That's not, I didn't put that thing out last week, you know, and, and Teresa even had knocked her on a, she claimed that a M23 was a indigenous, was an American, it was, it was a native American, you know, um, you know, half group. It took her a while to remove that, but still, there's a big problem in this field. And, and I, I hate to say this, this is a lot to do with whiteness. And it has to do with the way this field was developed and that it has to do with, you know, why do people have pedigrees like, like freaking horses, you know? It's sort of like, oh, cause we're the best. You know, we got a guy in the White House who says exact that exact eugenic framework. He's using that and, 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 and spreading that everywhere. I mean, it's, it's, it's surprising. You would think a century would have given us enough time for this stuff to just kind of like people work through it and go away. But no, it because it's tied to greed and it's tied to power. And people don't want to let that go. You know, so so we're here. And like in, in that blog post, I got a thing from the Aspen Roundtable to show you what the structure of racism is and what those levels are, because I wanted people to break it down, to take a look at that thing. And that thing really got me because it's 20 years old. And I'm still talking about the same thing. Esto cansa. Esto cansa. You know, it gets people really tired. You know, it's like you get a fatigue and you're like, you know what? Like, take a walk. Like, I don't even want to deal with you. So, like, there's so much amazing work going on. And it's a shame that, you know, you have to spend so much time talking about this. But it, it does impact a lot of people. Somebody with a following like that, it, it just, it's just... 
reflective of, 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 of how much further people have to go to, 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 to break down these, these stupid categories that we're stuck with, you know? True. I'll just say I'm, I'm in agreement with everything Ellen said, because we came this far by faith. We got to keep fighting and we do have to speak up and say what we got to say, even if it's just for ourselves and the community overall, they should be backing us up. Because like I said, Black Pro Gen, we've been doing this for six years. When we gone, it's the next generation is going to come up and do it. And I still stand by, we all got this work, this body of work. And it just had to be said and had to be told and it had to be discussed because we do know what we are doing and we're not going to let that discourage us from moving forward. But when you see something, say something. And as a community, that's what we did. And, and I not, just want to say too, that this is a nurturing space, you know, yeah. this mm -hmm. is not a space where you tell people are like, you know, we don't deal with that here. You know, we hear you out. We try to help people with their issues. I mean, it, there's a lot going on. And if it wasn't for this, I don't know what I'd do, honestly, you know, right. because it's just, it's just a really good place to be, you know, I, mm -hmm. nobody has to look at me like, oh, why is she coming here and talking about that now? You know? And that's why we always have to have these safe spaces from mm -hmm. the outside because it's always this, it, it just seems like even with genealogy, it's still always that generation. We still have to keep fighting for where we're supposed to be and why, even though half the time I'm like, if that's what you want to do, go ahead. Cause I ain't got time. Cause I'm supposed to be here doing what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. My work speaks for me, just like everybody on this panel. I just, you know, I just don't want to, it, it just rubbed me the wrong way. And I think it was, you know, for me, what could, what could be done for that, that example, that, that sir, that was, you know, being an example in that blog. Like now I'm worrying about why he can't have that information and, I'm wondering, did, did she give him the information? But that's another she, day. She and if you said some, anything on your blog, I've made mistakes, but I let my work sit there and say what it has to say, whether it's right or wrong. But that was that's the evolution of my true roots. But I mean, it, it's 2012 and I just don't get it. No, she's stuck in 2012 and she just doesn't get it. We already ahead of her eight years. Right. Right. And and uh Andre, what you got to say? I need for folks to come to a place of understanding that they may find a slave owner in their tree. And it's okay because that is just the historical context of what it was. So you know, the Ben Afflecks of the world who get stuck in their feelings about finding this out because that's not who they are as a person. Genealogy is a research of history. And so if your history contains these things, it is not an indictment on you. You just accept it for what it was. And you move on. You don't get stuck there. And so when you see these posts and you see the fight and the struggle that I hear many of you all go through, I'm like, I need y'all to get it together. I need y'all to really understand the history and put into context. Sometimes you got to take the emotional side out of it and just look at it for what it is and just be okay in that space. I think I, America's having a wake up call right now and and I'm happy for it because it's about time and and I'm going to thank the the true angel spirit of George Floyd to make us cross over and and I'm going to thank the people that are out there cuz like you said it's history history's not changing it's not changing what has happened has happened 
But what I see is that more people are learning about it. And that's why you see a lot of white people out there with the Black Lives Matter, because they're just learning this because their generations it's been denied or, or like you said, the name is not put out there who did what and whatever, you know, and, and Mr. Cotton is another one on my list and I'm glad I don't live in Come his Come on state. now. But that's yeah, why on. I yeah. keep saying you have to I, teach I history. I said anything. But, but you, you but, have but, to teach that, history right but, but here's the thing. They, the but Nicole Hannah Jones made an attempt mm -hmm. to teach a perspective of history and, and yet and still way. he fought her every, the man and created, created legislation on don't yeah. don't teach this and it's like Ooh. I've been listening and reading your perspective my entire life, your life. okay uh -huh. not right and my ancestors have been reading and listening to your perspective our entire yeah. lives and if we are transparent and we have a conversation if we if we channel the spirit of Toni Morrison or channel right. the spirit of James Baldwin in in this conversation and talk about how racism constantly is a game that moves the goalposts to keep your eyes off the prize mm -hmm. it's a yeah. distraction like Toni right it's a distraction. distraction and so that, yeah and so all I know to do all I know how to do is share receipts. That's yeah. all I know how to do. You yeah. can take it with a grain of salt. Like today, I got tired of seeing Stella Emanuel. I got tired of seeing that. Wondering why people in my news feed didn't have good sense, like my mother would say, to go and search the medical board website for the state that right. she was in. Mm. I didn't put up more then what was on the website that was there for free? Did I tell you that I did not even pay a dime to search for this information? That's right. Or the other person that somebody, well, what about this other doctor? They, that person don't even a medical license in the state of New York. Or wait a minute, hold on. What about, okay, I had the wrong name. Well, he's licensed, but he's a family practice doctor. He's not infectious diseases. Oh, he happens to be board certified, but it's not an infectious diseases. He has no admitting privileges. So if you take his regimen that's allegedly supposed to cure you from COVID, he can't even admit you to the hospital. So what you gonna do, drop dead? All I got is receipts. All I got is what this, this paper has on it. And my sanctified imagination. And what you said you wanted in your laws and how you wanted them to be applied. And how I have the ancestral memory of several generations of your trifling behavior that guides me through the process. So don't get upset when you've allowed your descendants to operate from a place of disassociation. And now they are trying to run a race to catch up to us when we are 30 laps ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. I even called, I even called Dr. Ross tonight and I said, do you think the certain people in the United States that they have a uh, disassociative disorder? Do you think it's, do you think that they just <laughs> forgot, right? As a, as a matter of handling the trauma that they've inflicted on other people? Do you, do you think that that's a plan? She said, no, mm -mm. it's all just about the system of power. That's all it is. It's power. It's, it's not anything clinically that people need to get medication for. But then again, you're making a good point and, and speaking about the power. We have to control what we do and keep mm -hmm. doing what we doing. Because if we don't control the narrative correctly, because it's going to be a battle no matter what, because we're out here in the public. And I think if, if we keep doing what we're doing, and, and for me and for everybody on here, it's the education. And that's why the article hit me so bad was because I know people, white and black, are going to believe what that article said. They're not going to go check because of whoever or whatever. And that's the problem. We, that's why you got to keep coming to the groups. And what did uh, True call it? The safe place or, uh, you know. You have safe to be space. able to come there to the safe space and expect you're going to be okay. It doesn't matter if you're black or white. We're, as far as I'm concerned, you're going to get facts and you're going to get the truth. I'm not mm -hmm. going to deny anything and it doesn't matter how bad it is. I might shed tears that, you know, and stuff like that. That's okay. You know, 
I feel the ancestors when I'm doing this kind of work and stuff. I have conversations all too. the time talking to these people. And I they're my people. And they're other people's people. You know, so I think the mutual respect in this field, you know, that institutionalized stuff need to be cracked for number one. Respect me for what I do. I respect you for what you do. If I have a question, I'm going to ask. If you have a question, you know, just ask. That's all. That's all it takes. But don't just put out lies. That's following a whole nother system that, what What are we at, 2020 now? And, mm. and when did and our folks come over? It just keeps perpetrating that. It just keeps coming. And that's the cycle. My... But why should we have to keep trying to break I'm, it and look, I ain't it. trying to I ain't, I ain't trying to break it. or correct nothing. You would it somebody asked me to comment um, on this and I said you can read my blog or look at 100 episodes of this show. Yeah, that was my That's point. my comment. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. not, I mean, Shelly, you had an amazing blog, Renata, you had an amazing blog, Shannon Christmas even came out the woodwork. He blogged on it too. Okay? James, what you got to say cuz we about to close this out in a second. The moral of the story is when you open your mouth you put your your brain on display. Oh, interesting. Hmm. Hmm. Anyone else got final wrap up thoughts? Um, Robert Swales, William Ivy. Well, I'm going to speak on behalf of my <laughs> granddaddy, William Ivy. You all know he was on the Genealogy Road Show, and that's how I found him. Mm -hmm. But they were my granddaddy Ike's parents, and they were from Pike County, Alabama. In, mm -hmm. near Troy. So I know today is Buffalo Soldiers Day. I wanted to make note of that. And my army hero, uh, she's my shero, Kathy Williams. Um, usually on crew chat, me and Nika, we do some type of song or scene from one of the movies or shows that we do. And we kind of do like a little dedication to it. But um, I do wanted to say too to uh, Shelly, we're so proud of you of your SDUSMP award winner. Um, Thank for, you. She got the Solomon Northup award, and we wanted to tell you that we love you. And if we could see you, we wanted to give you hugs and kisses. But yeah, so Thank back you. to my William Ivy, I wanted to um, dedicate this episode to Congressman Robert John Robert Lewis. Um, we have to keep praying for the continued strength of his family. We have to keep marching on, you know, as our song is, you know, lift every voice, but we have to march on high as the listening skies and just let us march on to victory. And that's what this episode is about. We're not going to let anybody turn us around. So with that, I'm going to hand the mic back over to Nika. And I just want to wrap up by saying that just as we watched his service on television, the image that was seared in our minds was his body crossing that bridge again. Oh Lord, I cried like a baby. That, that in itself is the thing that, it, it's like us seeing them taking MLK's casket down or that, that image of Coretta and their daughter on her, right? Mm -hmm. And I want to really evoke that image to you because when I talked to my right-hand civil rights person and I asked her what she remembered about John Lewis and her riding on a bus with him to Montgomery, Alabama as a 19-year-old girl and, and her meeting up with him at the various reunions over the years, she said, he always treated you equal. And not only that, but she said that it was never like the first time, every time you talked to him. The other thing she mentioned to me about him um, that really stayed with me is that is we're, we're taking our ancestors across that bridge. Mm -hmm. That is literally what our work is doing. It's taking them back to a place that was once broken and it did not have a lot of positive things associated with it. But now we're remaking the image of us on that bridge. Now it's positive. Now it is something to behold. Now it is something for us 
for our descendants to remember. And that's, 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 we, we are constantly working in, in that, in genealogy, because a lot of us have been removed from the ancestral location because of the migration. It's not as painful for us to cross that bridge as it would be our, our, our parents. So just think mm -hmm. of that reckoning that we all have to come to. It may be the first time you see your ancestors as an enslaved person with a dollar value associated with it. It may be the first time you see your ancestors involved in the prison system. It may be the first time you see them, you know, um, re remarked to in a negative way, but bring them across that bridge. They deserve Absolutely. it. At one point, there was no, we, we weren't getting a horse, we weren't getting a carriage. We literally had to carry that casket across the bridge with our hands. But mm -hmm. now through technology, through access, through education, through people like those on this panel sharing their experiences and their know-how, we are in that horse-drawn carriage taking our ancestors across that bridge. So I just pray mm -hmm. and hope that, that no matter what happens, that you just just carry them across. No matter who was watching, no matter who was paying attention, carry them across. Mm -hmm. Make sure that they get the home going that they are supposed to get. And 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 you might not have been at that funeral, but you are reinterring them by telling their truth to the masses. So we love you. We thank you. I want to send one out for John Goins arriving in 1619, Fatima born 1775, died 1848, Robert Swells born circa 1800, Tomasa Mendez born circa 1745, Zeke Weems born 1790 to 1875, and William Ivy born 1812. We are crossing that bridge. We have been there. Don't show up late trying to act like you were helping us when you just sat back and watched because we carried the casket across by ourselves. Have a good night, y'all. Thank you. <laughs>